Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CE Pro webinar, Google Nest Ecosystem of Products for the Custom Installer. We're really thrilled that everyone's joined us this afternoon, or it could still be morning where you are. Uh, my name is Arlen Schweiger. I'm the executive editor of CE Pro, and I am really pleased to be joined today by our guest speaker, Adil Tufal, professional channel lead for the custom install and security at Google. And we are very pleased to be sponsored by a Google Nest Pro today. So we'll go through a few housekeeping slides to begin with. Uh, first off, you know, the webcast is it's streamed over the internet. So make sure that your computer, your device's audio is available, it's unmuted, and the volume is tuned up to an acceptable level so you can hear us okay. If you're having trouble with the re receiving the stream, please select the question mark in the upper corner of the Global Meet interface, and you can select Test My System Now. And this will give you information on your connection and how to remedy any problems that you may have with it. And sometimes, you know what, just simply by disconnecting and rejoining, the event will allow you to catch a better stream if you're experiencing problems. Now, the other thing, especially if you've known, if you've been to our webinars before, we love to have some interaction from the audience. Uh, you're here, it's your time, especially for something like today where we have access to someone from Google Nest Pro, which is you know, a rare opportunity for us. We'd love to have you submit some questions and that's easy to do during the event. Uh, you can ask questions of a deal. Uh, what you can do is on the left side of your screen, you'll see there's a box labeled ask a question where you can enter them. And you know what questions related to the webcast topic, we'll hold these on till the end of the session at the Q&A. We'll leave some time after our, our presentation. And if they are technical issues, you can enter those into the box. And you know what, we'll be able to answer those immediately for you. So again, uh, I'm Arlen, we have a deal with us. Uh, and we will welcome a deal and go over just a quick kind of um, agenda for today. What we're gonna do is, uh, CD Expo was recently held, so we're going to talk a little bit about that and how that was for Google Nest Pro. Uh, and then we're going to talk about a couple of new uh, new products that are going to be pretty big in the, in the ecosystem. So we have the uh, wired second gen of the Nest doorbell, and then we have the Nest Wi-Fi Pro, where we're also going to be talk about um, Wi-Fi uh, 6E and you know how that's gonna be very big. And what, uh, after that, we're gonna talk a little bit about Matter 1.0, uh, the new uh, protocol that was just recently released after a long wait this year. Uh, there was a very interesting discussion about it that Google participated in at the CD Expo. And so we'll get a deal's take on, on you know, how that's going to impact the industry and professional installers. Uh, and then lastly, we're gonna talk about the professional for Google Nest the benefits of being a Google Nest Pro. So with that, I'm gonna throw it over to Adil. Adil, thank you for being on the webcast today. Hey Arlen, thank you for having me. I, I wanted to thank you and CE Pro and for setting this all up. I know there's a lot of work that goes into the background on making this happen. So I sincerely appreciate that, what the entire team has done. Um, so yeah, you, like you said, we were at, the, at Cedia after a brief absence. Um, and Cedia for us was uh, a really great event. We uh, invited our entire team to come participate. As you can see, um, we had a very uh, great booth, uh, a lot, a well-designed booth. Um, and we had a lot of people come through and take a look at what we were working on and what we were highlighting. Um, one of the cool things that we did was we highlighted our entire product line. We had a lot of great uh, products that we introduced uh, over the past couple years that people weren't able to see in person um, and we were able to talk about that. We also highlighted um, manufacturers. So like companies like Lutron and Savant and um, Denon and Yamaha were in our booth as well, showing the fact that they all work with Google Assistant and work on the, the Google uh, platform. So we are really excited to be there. Yeah, Adil, were you there last in, uh, I guess, 2019 would have been the last in-person expo that you like that Google likely would have attended. How did this year's booth compare to some of the booths in the, in the past that you've been to and some of the expos you've been to? It was really great. I mean, we've always had a really strong presence at Cedia uh, every year. 
Um, and this CDO was no different, as you can see from the pictures. Um, we definitely had a well-designed booth. It was a, a fairly large booth as well. And we had this um, after a brief absence. Now, unfortunately, the world went through uh, a little bit of a blip with the pandemic. And because of that, you know, we and along with a lot of other major manufacturers were not able to attend. So as you can see from the pictures this time around, when we were able to kind of come back, um, we brought the entire house and it seemed like we also got to deal with a lot of great uh, attendees. I know the expo this year had a ton of attendees. I think it was record breaking numbers. Um, and we definitely were really excited to talk to, to everybody that came through our booth. Yeah, I believe, uh, you know, there were over 15,000 uh, registered attendees and, and I think 41% were first timers. So I imagine you had a lot of conversations with people that, you know, might not know all of the capabilities that, you know, the Google Nest Pro ecosystem has these days with your, with your products. Uh, tell us about some of the conversations that you had, maybe, uh, or, you know, some of the team members may have reported to you back about some of, you know, how those conversations went, especially with people who might not have, you know, known so much of what Google can do these days. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, having um, third party manufacturers in our booth showing those types of integrations. Also, uh, some of the accessories that we introduced uh, over the last couple of years, like POE for our cameras, uh, solar panels as well, peaked a lot of conversation for attendees. And to your point, you know, almost half were new. So the engagement at the show was actually really uh, high, right? Because people wanted to actually come in and learn and talk and understand where this fits into their business model. So we had a lot of great engagement. You can see from the pictures, um, we were pretty much running around the entire three days that we were there. Yeah, the booth looks pretty busy, just judging from those pictures, definitely. And uh, yeah, and it, and it was a great expo. I certainly thought so. And, um, you know, lots of booths uh, had very, very busy days this year. So let's, it, you know, a lot of um, attendees were seeing, you know, products for the first time in, in several years. Let's dig into some of those new products then that we mentioned before with the with the doorbell and the Wi-Fi. Absolutely. So let's start off with... Uh, the Nest Doorbell. Um, so the Nest Doorbell uh, Wired, um, this is our second generation. This is replacing the Nest Hello, which was our first generation product. It is available now. And we're really excited about uh, this product because it brings the entire portfolio together um, under the one app scenario with the, the Google Home app. Now, the beautiful part about this is that um, with a majority of Nest Pro devices, they come with exclusive three-year warranties with Pro installation, um, which means that you have to have a Pro ID uh, and sign up to be a Nest Pro. This gives the customer or the end user an additional warranty because we know that a Pro installed it, and we know when a Pro installs it that the installation is going to be done right, and we're comfortable extending the warranty out to the end user. Um, so that's something that we did for this uh, model as well. Um, we also introduced a lot of great uh, feature sets, right? Perfect, yeah, let's talk about some of those. I see you have the, the smart alerts down there. What is that, you know, what is that all about? So yeah, the smart alerts is um, some of my favorites um, on what makes the, the Nest doorbell so special. Um, you have intelligent alerts, like how it can differentiate between a person and your pet. Right, so we have pet detection. We can also dif differentiate between packages. So when you do get a package, um, when you order online, it'll let you know, hey, you got something in the mail. Also, we have uh, a feature called familiar face where the doorbell can understand who the person is that came to your door. So let's just say I come to your door for the first time, you get a notification saying there's a person at your door you can click on my face, name it a deal. The next time I come to your door, you'll get a notification saying a deal's at your front door, right? So really cool, intelligent, smart features that the smart alerts uh, bring to the end user, right? And yeah, that's kind of a little wow factor there, I think, with the, the familiar face alert, certainly. Yeah, absolutely. And outside of the, the smart alerts, we do offer uh, continuous video recording. So 
the idea when it's um, when you're choosing the Nest doorbell wired, you can actually have video recording up to 10 days um, if you decide to do so with the Nest Aware subscription. And this allows you to see what's going on all the time with your doorbell. And you can go back, like I said, up to 10 days to see uh, what's going on. You also have the ability to um, have a full conversation via the app or through your Google Nest Hub um, with the person at the, uh, at the front door. So let's just say you're in the kitchen, someone rings the doorbell, you see this on your Nest Hub, and now you can actually have a full two-way communication between the Nest Hub and also the front door. The cool thing that amplifies this and what makes it so special, especially in the Cedia world, is that we've partnered with manufacturers like Sony, Samsung, LG, and many others. And if you set it up on the, your specific TV, you can actually answer your front door through, let's say, your Sony television and have full two-way communication between your television and the front door. Now, obviously, that requires additional setup on the television and the uh, Google side, but again, that's what makes that talk and listen feature so uh, amazing because, and that's the custom aspect of it. Right, definitely. That would be something very cool for, you know, the custom install crowd to certainly be able to show off to, you know, the Nest customers or the you know, potential Nest customers there. Absolutely. And I mentioned um, Nest Aware subscription. Um, you know, that's not mandatory to have. Um, and if you do decide to pass on the Nest Aware subscription, we do have uh, where the only or one of the only manufacturers to actually do this where we give three hours of event history at no additional charge, right? So if you decide to pass on the Nest Aware, you can still go back three hours and see what happened um, on the Nest doorbell as well. And then lastly on, this, um, on the feature sets is we have the better together story, right? You know, we have uh, products that work with each other. I, I just mentioned how it can work with Sony, Samsung, LG, any Google Assistant, ready television, and how you can kind of create that experience for the end user. And that's, I think, the home run when it comes to Nest in general, is that better together story. Now, at the same time, you know, we mentioned uh, earlier about the uh, intelligent alerts um, and the three-hour history. The product also has uh, local video storage on it as well. So just in case the internet goes out, the power goes out, um, it can still uh, hold video locally for a short amount of time to ensure that you don't miss everything while your uh, internet went down or when um, your uh, power went out. And then lastly, uh, high quality video, we do use HDR um, and you do get a, a really clear and sharp picture and with the familiar face alerts, the package detection, the pet detection, um, it can tell um, from a good distance um, what uh, every uh, differentiator is. One other thing that I like to call out um, that might not be a key feature, but I, I definitely like to call it out is the fact that we're a three, four vertical view, which means you get the head to toe. Um, sometimes what happens with uh, video doorbells is you get that 16 by nine and it's very horizontal, but it's not vertical. The reason why we decide to do this is because we do get a lot, you know, especially today, uh, people do order products and <coughs> they arrive at the front door. So you want to have that head to toe uh, aspect rather than more of a 16 by nine. And ideal, are most people uh, are most people going to be looking at this if it's not going to be on the TV, it'll just be through the app? Yeah, I mean, we give the flexibility, right? So if you want, if you have a t TV that's compatible, you can set it up through the television. If you want to use your hub in your kitchen and you can kind of quickly go up to your hub or you can even give it a voice command saying, hey, G, who is at the front door? And then lastly, let's just say you're away from your home and someone rings your doorbell or approaches your home. You can pull out your, your pixel and uh, answer your front door um, through your, your, your mobile phone. So the, the key here is flexibility. Now, 
when it comes to our doorbells, we do have um, obviously our Nest doorbell wired, uh, which I just discussed. But keep in mind, we also have a battery version of our Nest doorbell for those customers who don't have a transformer or want complete flex flexibility, like putting it uh, near their garage or even on their back door. They have the ability with the Nest doorbell battery. Really, the only key differences between the two is the continuous video recording that the Nest Doorbell Wired offers. So if you absolutely need to have a uh, history of 10 days with the Nest Aware Plus subscription, you can do that with the Nest Doorbell Wired. If you have a little bit more flexibility, the Nest Doorbell battery does event-based history. So if you come within range, it'll activate and it'll start recording or streaming uh, at that point. Uh, both offer local video storage and when the Wi-Fi is out, um, and both offer up to three hours uh, at no additional charge. Um, both sizes are uh, within reason. If you want something a little bit more compact, we recommend the Nest Doorbell Wired. If you want something um, that's a little bit bigger but gives you that flexibility, you have the Nest Doorbell battery. Now, for the Nest Aware subscription, um, this is something that um, we're, we're really excited about because it's very affordable. Um, it's $6 a month um, for the standard Nest Aware. Um, and with the standard Nest Aware, you get familiar face, emergency calling, uh, 30 days of event video history. And then uh, when we move to the Nest Aware Plus, it is $12 a month. Um, yes, you get the familiar faces, where it can understand who's approaching your door. You get the emergency calling if you need that in a uh, emergency situation. Where it gets bumped up is you get 60 days of event-based video history along with 10 days of continuous video recording. And Adil, is this, is this per camera? Is this for the whole home? It's for the entire home. So um, you can have, you know, one, three, five, six, seven, you know, doorbells, cameras, from Nest, and for a flat rate of either $6 a month or $12 a month, it covers the entire home. So again, very affordable. All right. <clears throat> now, looking at the uh, Nest Doorbell Wired, um, I'm, I'm not going to get too technical, but for those of you that are, a uh, couple key callouts here. This comes in multiple colors. The Pro version is in snow, which is the standard white. Um, which comes with the additional warranty. It's also a different model number and SKU um, to kind of give the differentiation to the pro channel. But we do offer the Nest doorbell in ash, linen, and ivy um, as well. Um, audio quality, night vision is something that's available on the doorbell as well. It does work with the Google Home app. And the Google Home app is our one app experience for the end user. One thing that I do want to call out is the Google Home app is for not only just the Google Nest devices, but also other manufacturers. So I'll give you an example in my home. You know, I have Google Nest devices, but I also have, let's just say Dyson fans, and I can actually control my Dyson fans from my Google Home app. So I don't have to actually go have to go app to app. I can do that all within the one app experience within the Google Home app. And that's where the Google Nest devices, along with the manufacturers that we've partnered with, kind of really uh, uh, really shine by giving you that one app experience. Right, and I know we're gonna be talking about that, just how the whole ecosystem is interoperable. And then, you know, of course, with the matter uh, being released, how it can everything can be expanded, certainly. Absolutely. And keep something in mind, the Assistant does have compatibility with the Nest doorbell. So again, if you have a Nest Hub, you can actually answer your front door through the Nest Hub. And for those of you not familiar with the Nest Hub, it is our display assistant, so it does have a screen. So you can actually see who's at the door. You can also have full two-way communication between the front door and uh, the Nest Hub uh, as well. And would it be through the, could you do it through the smart speakers as well it, where you have, and then it would just kind of interrupt whatever's uh, playing to say, you know, kind of here's the chime. Yeah. So to your point with the um, speakers, they do do the chime. Um, but usually 
uh, customers enjoy the Nest Hub because they can actually have a visual aspect to it. Um, same goes for the television integration and then also answering your door through your Pixel or Android device uh, or even iPhone. Okay, and so a deal if they're just if they're watching uh, if they're watching television, how does that happen? How does that pop on the screen? Is it like just up in the corner somewhere? Or is that something that can be configured? Yeah. So with the with the assistant in, uh, uh, enabled televisions, you'll get a notification, and then at that point you can ask the Google Assistant that's built into the TV to actually answer your front door. For those televisions that do not have Google Assistant integrations. Uh, it's not the end of the world. Um, you can uh, attach a Chromecast device to any television and allow compatibility uh, between that, maybe let's just say analog TV from you know, 10, 15 years ago. You can now answer the front door through that television as well. So flexibility is definitely there. Oh, that's great, okay. Great, well, let's, uh, so we'll move on here to uh, some other questions that you know, integrators are going to be asking, their customers are going to be asking. So, you know, first off, um, in terms of the products, just going over the differences between, you know, what was bumped up between first gen and second gen of the doorbell. Yeah, so what we did was we improved on the uh, taller three to four aspect ratio. Um, we also uh, did the Nest Aware subscription free of charge for uh, the first three hours, right? That wasn't available. Uh, on the first generation. We also improved on the activity zones and we now uh, also included local video storage, which was not available on the first generation. So we um, we definitely made some major improvements that really impacted the end user in a very positive way. Excellent. Uh, and for the person who already says, okay, I've got the Nest devices at home, uh, you know, does this Nest doorbell work with the Nest app? You can tackle that a little bit, but just to, to reiterate. Yeah, so um, we have the Nest app and then we have the Google Home app. Um, this device will be available through the Google Home app. And it goes to what we were saying about the one app experience as we continue to migrate um, over to the Google Home app and make that the app of choice for all Google Nest devices. Um, so for this device, this will be in the Google Home app. It'll also work with the Google Nest devices in that app, along with the third-party devices like, you know, Sony and uh, Dyson and all the other manufacturers that we've partnered with in the Google Home app. Okay. And again, talking about it, always uh, just the the being able to keep recording, what happens if the Wi-Fi goes down? That's going to be, you know, that question that they'll be asked about quite a bit. Absolutely. You know, um, end users are always concerned that, hey, I have video doorbell. If something, God forbid, happened during uh, my Wi-Fi being out or even the power being out, um, what happens? The idea is that the uh, doorbell will continue using its local storage capability uh, and record while the Wi-Fi is down. So, it will uh, do that up to one hour um, of the Wi-Fi being down. Hopefully by that point, the Wi-Fi will be back up and it will upload anything that's been stored locally into um, the Nest Aware subscription once it comes back online. All right, and then how about that ease of installation? What are integrators uh, looking at here? Well, look, we install just like any other video doorbell, right? Um, for some, men, for some people, it's easier, and for some people, it's difficult. Um, I think with us, it really comes down to the fact that we have multiple options. So we have the Nest doorbell wired, and if you're comfortable doing the install with the transformer um, and the chime that's built into the house, that's definitely a great option. If you're not as comfortable uh, going through and interacting with that transformer, um, or that hot wire, we have the Nest doorbell battery for even greater flexibility uh, as well. Uh, to take it one step further, we have solar panel uh, and PoE options for the Nest doorbell battery as well. So really what it comes down to is for the integrator to make that judgment call of, do I wanna do it wired? Do I wanna do it uh, battery? But the installation should be relatively easy. And look, uh, remember these guys are professionals, so I don't see them foreseeing um, any challenges when it comes to the install. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, one question that they get 
asked about uh, very often, I'm sure, by their clients uh, when it comes to anything that's you know connected on the network. Uh, you know, privacy concerns, cybersecurity. How will uh, you know? How do they answer those? Will Will this be able to keep my data safe? Absolutely. I mean, we use 128 bit encryption, which is uh, the highest bit of encryption available today. Um, but what does that mean for the end user? You know, a, a question the integrator or the end user can ask themselves quite simply is, uh, do they do online banking today? And if the answer is yes, then online banks use 128 bit encryption. So if you're comfortable doing online banking, you should be comfortable having the Google Nest smart home devices in your home because there's a high level of security uh, that's built in. All right, that's sort of give them peace of mind. Absolutely. And, you know, as we kind of look at, you know, as a quick recap to the, some of the features on the product, you know, we do have some really great feature sets with our smart alerts through familiar face, through package detection, pet detection, um, also uh, activity zones. This is really what differentiates us from uh, our competitors, um, specifically for familiar face. We also took it a step further by offering you know, three hours of video history at no additional charge, right? We also uh, have local storage, just in case your Wi-Fi goes down, that it'll continue recording. So you still have peace of mind that there is something there. Um, we have really great flexible controls and integrations. Like I mentioned earlier, if you wanna answer your front door through your Pixel Android device or iPhone, you can do that if you wanna use the Google Nest Hub in your kitchen or around your home, and you can actually see who's going on um, at the front door, you can do that as well. And then also the television integration uh, that we have on most of the uh, Nest video doorbells um, is something that we're really great uh, and excited about. I know a lot of people don't think about design, but quite honestly, I feel like our doorbell looks pretty beautiful. Um, it, it really blends into the environment we also have multiple colors. Like I said earlier, the pro version is available in snow. Um, the other colors are available as well. So if, if there's an aesthetic quality that you're looking for, we do have flexibility, um, especially if you're working with like designers and architects to kind of blend into the background. And like I just mentioned a quick second ago, um, we are private and secure with the encryption, with the 128-bit encryption that's available. We also have the two-step verification to ensure that it's you registering your device um, as well and not, not a third party. And you know that peace of mind allows people to have this uh, at their front door, knowing that they're going to get the highest uh, privacy standard and security standard uh, through that encryption. And like I mentioned before, for those of you out there that do online banking, it's the same encryption rate. So if you're okay with... Uh, banks encrypting, encrypting and holding on to your money, you should be comfortable having the Google Nest smart devices in your home. And I deal real quick, uh, you know, on the, uh, the thoughtful design aspect of it, that was certainly, you know, a theme of this year's CD Expo. There was a lot of talk about design these days, um, you know, and I think usually what, you know, companies might offer these types of solutions in maybe two options, two colors. Uh, you guys do four. I imagine, you know, with a, a, a a brand of Google being behind the Nest Pro, you can do a lot of market research on what customers are preferring these days and you know what some of the, the pros might be hearing for requests. <clears throat> um, can you talk about some of that in terms of what influenced those those design choices? Having four, you know, having four color options when you could have said, oh, you know what, we could let's just have something light and something dark. Yeah, absolutely. You know, design is a big part of what goes into our thought process when coming out with a new product. Um, so to your point, we could have easily just stuck to one color, uh, even maxed out at two, but we went uh, up to four. And, the, and a key reason why is, you know, uh, electronics don't need to stand out. They can blend in to the home, right? And uh, a lot of people, when they are designing their home, they, they want it to blend in and kind of uh, work together uh, as much as possible, right? I think we're coming to an end of, you know, these big black boxes or eyesores or something that actually sticks out. Um, people want it to blend in because if you look at the analog devices of yesterday, 
those, you know, design was a big part of it, right? They would blend in to their environment. Uh, consumer electronics should be no different. And Google puts a lot of thought into design and not only design, but also sustainability, right? So 46% of the uh, of the plastic that's used is recycled uh, plastic as well. So, like I said, a lot of thought goes into um, when we're making and designing a doorbell or any product to work with the entire home, not just stick out like a sore thumb. Great, definitely. Well, it looks nice and and, and low profile too. So, speaking of that, you know, just the reliability and having everything work with everything else. Uh, let's talk about the the Wi-Fi Pro because. Clearly, that is, uh, you know, the backbone to a lot these days. <laughs> yeah, so this is a product that we're really excited about. This is coming out very soon, um, just a few days away here. Um, but the Nest Wi-Fi Pro um, is a product that we just launched that um, we're really excited about. And a key reason why is because the technology that we put into this is Wi-Fi 6E. So this is much faster than even standard Wi-Fi 6. Um, Wi-Fi 6E gives the end user the ability to get um, speeds that are almost three times faster than Wi-Fi 6, right? And not only that, we're starting to see devices that have 6E compatibility as well. So it's not like we're, we're uh, early to the game. We, we made a judgment call and decided to come out with 6C at a really great timing with um, a lot of devices embracing this technology. And the great thing about uh, this router is the fact that we decided to move past six, but also we were just talking about this a second ago. One of the things that we really highlight with this router is the design. And you might be thinking, um, why start off there? Key reason is, is people want Wi-Fi everywhere right? Um, we do have a mesh Wi-Fi system that's available um, in multiple packs or even single units. But the idea here is that you can put the Nest Wi-Fi Pro in any room and it will blend in. It'll look beautiful and it's not going to stick out. And it gives the end user and even the integrator the flexibility to put this product uh, in parts of the home that Maybe in the past, they wouldn't be comfortable putting a router in, right? That gloss finish um, really does look beautiful. And you can put this in the living room, family room, the den, the kids' room, um, the kitchen, wherever it might be. And it's not going to be like, oh, that's a router, right? Um, so design uh, of this is key and important. Now, um, the cool thing about this is that uh, it is tri-band, so 2.4, 5 gig, and um, six gig as well. Um, you can have up to 300 IoT devices uh, connected to this. So um, a lot of devices. And as we kind of progress um, in technology, we start to see that more and more devices in the home are connected um, to the internet, to Wi-Fi, and having um, 300 units really is a way for the integrator to ensure that, hey, we can cover everything. Um, one yeah, of the so that's a pretty big number as well. It is a pretty big number, absolutely. Square feet. Yeah. Yeah. And look, getting into the meat and potatoes of this, you know, we have really great blazing uh speed at 5.4 uh, gigabits per second, right? Um, like I said, almost three times faster than Wi-Fi 6. Also, one de one device covers up to 2200 square feet, right? So depending on where you live, um, depending on the size of the home, you have the flexibility of starting off with one and going all the way up to 600 uh, or 6,600 uh, feet with a three pack um, for the Nest Wi-Fi. And again, if you need to go beyond that, let's just say you have a home that's 8,000 or 10,000 square feet, all you do is add another device and it'll continue with the coverage. One last thing that I love about this router, and we'll talk about this in just a second, is that it is a thread border router, which means that it is uh, allows the matter compatible devices to be in that thread spectrum. And that gives you the same blanket coverage through Wi-Fi and also the matter protocol, right? It is a matter enabled device uh, as well. So 
this is kind of a, hey, you get Wi-Fi, but you also get really great matter coverage in your home when you decide to bring in the Nest Wi-Fi Pro. Right. So that opens up a whole bunch of opportunities. And, you know, let's uh, let's kind of dig into that between the whole, you know, Google ecosystem and Matter 1.0 and what, what that all means and what it might possibly mean for integrators and their customers. Absolutely. So we'll start off with the ecosystem. You know, a lot of uh, a lot of our devices have that better together story. So they work together. They create an experience for the end user. Right. Um, we also work with other manufacturers, right? I believe uh, there's uh, over 200 million devices that we work with today on the Google platform. Now, the great thing about the Google Nest devices is the fact that we do work together and it's it makes it easier for the integrator to advise to the end user. And it also makes sense to the end user to bring in additional Google Nest devices into their home. So. Let me, let me give you an example. Let's start off with our Nest thermostat. Our Nest thermostat is amazing. Um, it's a really smart thermostat that gives a lot of features to the end user, and it really gives the end user the ability to have uh, really amazing energy management. But <clears throat> how can we make this better? So, you know, if you start off with the Nest thermostat, you can turn to your customer and say, Mr. Miss Customer, did you know we have the Nest Protect? It's our smoke CO detector. If it detects smoke or CO, it'll automatically shut off the air handler via the Nest thermostat. Is that something you like today? Right, so now, um, which by the way, that's a commercial standard that happens in commercial setups where God forbid there is a fire, it will shut off the air handler um, in the commercial setup. In the home, we're shutting off the HVAC system in the home. And the reason why is because the number one cause of death in a fire is not the actual fire, it's the smoke, the smoke inhalation. So by doing that, we're preventing the smoke from spreading uh, through other parts of the home. So now you're walking around the home, you're installing you know, one, two, three, four, five Nest Protects, depending on how big the home is. And you turn to your customer and say, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, now that you have the Nest Protect, did you know we have our Nest cams? And if it detects smoke or fire, it'll turn on your Nest cams and it'll start recording. Is that something you like today? So now you're walking around the house, you're putting a camera in each corner of the house, right? Um, you turn to your customer and say, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, we can't put a Nest cam on your front door, but we have our Nest doorbells. Is that something you like today? So now you're installing the Nest doorbell and you turn to your customer and say, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, now that you know who's at the front door, we have the Nest XEL lock, and you can actually unlock or lock your door right from your Pixel or Android or iPhone, and you don't have to get up off your couch on that lazy Saturday and let them in. Is that something you like today? So now you just installed the Nest XEL lock, and you turn to your customer and say, Mr. Miss Customer, now we installed all these great Google Nest devices. Did you know we have the Nest Hub? It allows you to control a majority of these with your voice. Is that something you like today? So now you're setting up the Google Nest Hub for the end user. You're showing them how they can answer the front door uh, with the Nest Hub. They can control their thermostat with the Nest Hub. But from here, it gets interesting because now you can offer uh, a third-party manufacturer. So you can say, Mr. and Ms. Customer, now that you have the Google Nest Hub, you can now offer Lutron Lighting, right? Or uh, Helios or MusicCast uh, audio systems or... Sony, Samsung, or LG TVs, because they are all compatible with the Google system, right? Now, uh, keep something in mind. This entire conversation started with a thermostat, and we ended up um, having Nest Protects, smoke CO detectors, you know, cameras, doorbells, door lock, Nest Hub. Also, we were able to install Lutron Lighting, you know, Heos, MusicCast, even Sonos, audio systems, Sony, Samsung, LG TVs, right? And the next product made the previous product better. And that's what we mean by the better together story. Now, the last thing that you also want to offer is Nest Wi-Fi Pro, right? Because with the Nest Wi-Fi Pro, you have all these devices and the failure rate at Google Nest is less than a percent. So you want to have a robust Wi-Fi system. We obviously recommend 
you know, the best Wi-Fi out there. Nest Wi-Fi Pro now kind of comes into that category. So you can definitely offer that as a solution to the end user. But this is what we mean by the ecosystem is it's not just Google Nest devices. It is manufacturers like Lutron, like Denon, like Yamaha, like uh, Sony, Samsung, LG, working together to create that experience for the end user. Now, because we are talking about third-party devices, that's why the Matter Protocol is so important right? Because now how can we get every manufacturer speaking the same language? Right. So let's dig into that a little bit, Adil, because I know that uh, at the expo, you know, I think your session was probably the, mo the, the most attended session that, that there was. I mean, it was, as you can see from the photos, it was very packed. Uh, people are very, they're intrigued by this matter, the possibilities, maybe not sure exactly what they can do with it. So, you know, from a, from a Google perspective, um, where where and how do you see this impacting, uh, you know, these pro project designs? Yeah, so there, there it is going to impact because interoperability is going to become more and more important as we continue to uh, move forward in technology. Now, at the Expo, I uh, wanted to thank, you know, CE Pro and Jason Knott for moderating the Matter panel that we had at the CDA Expo. And it wasn't just Google. So, Yes, we had Kevin Poe from Google there, um, who's leading Matter internally uh, on our side. But we also had G. Paul Hess from uh, Snap AV, right, and Control 4, um, representing home automation there, along with James Shirt from Leviton, as well as uh, Val Zelensko from Samsung SmartThings. So <clears throat> it wasn't just Google saying, hey, this is really cool. It was a bunch of manufacturers getting together and saying, hey, this is matter. This is how it's going to affect the future of consumer electronics. And you can see major, major manufacturers like Samsung was there, uh, Control 4, Leviton, uh, along with Google. And a lot of great questions was asked by Jason Knott and really gave the audience a better understanding of why matter is going to impact uh, the future of their design in the home. So what does that mean? So... <clears throat> Matter is essentially a new universal protocol that allows manufacturers to create interoperability and also essentially communicate each other outside of Wi-Fi, right? Um, now, you can also do Wi-Fi or we have thread chips, but the idea here is that these devices can communicate to each other and create an experience for the end user like no other. Now, we are not, um, this is actually managed <coughs> by the CSA or the Connectivity Standard Alliance, which happens to manage ZigBee and Z-Wave as well. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, the CSA has decided to manage the Matter Protocol, but also we have major manufacturers that are also supporting it. So companies like <clears throat> Amazon, Apple, Google, you know, Samsung, <coughs> pardon me, Tuya, I, Ikea, Assembly, you can see on the screen that it definitely is making a difference. Right, certainly a lot of names that are familiar to this channel too, you know, Legrand, Residio, Schneider Electric, Somfy, uh, you know, there are definitely some interesting uh, possibilities there when, you know, when you talk about um, down the road, how this might be able to influence things, certainly. Absolutely. And not only that, the idea with Matter is we want setup to be seamless. We want it to be reliable. We also want <clears throat> management to be simple, right? Not just one user, but the entire family being able to control the entire home. But on top of that, we want to make this... <coughs> I mean, as easy as possible. So the idea here is with the integration of Matter, you'll have devices from Google Nest, but also from other manufacturers like you saw before on the slide. And every day, more and more manufacturers are supporting the Matter protocol. There's, <clears throat> there's SDKs, APIs that are being created <coughs> to make it a lot easier 
to integrate with the devices. And not only that, but what Matter is going to do, it's really going to take innovation and intelligence to the next level. So whether it's <clears throat> automation or routines, um, imagine every manufacturer being able to control that experience and pushing the innovation level to the end user. And one last thing I'll say on matter <clears throat> in general as a protocol, Arlen, is the fact that this is going to make it easier for all the manufacturers to create an experience. And the winner here is the end user. <coughs> Adil, let's talk, we'll talk more about, uh, you know, from the pro perspective about how this is going to influence, you know, everything that, um, that they might be able to do and getting involved with being a, a Nest Pro and certainly all the, all the benefits there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so here, one last thing on Matter is we do have a bunch of devices on uh, that are already Matter compatible, whether that's our Nest Hub, Nest Hub Max, uh, Nest Wi-Fi, um, Nest Audio. Obviously, our new Nest thermostat is also uh, Matter compatible. But this is something that Google is definitely behind, and we're starting to see the other manufacturers. Now, since Google is behind it, and we have a lot of great Google Nest Pro devices that are specifically for the channel. One of the things that comes up, <clears throat> why be a Nest Pro? Now, Nest Pro allows um, integrators to be a part of the Nest Pro program. First and foremost, it gives you access to exclusive devices like our Pro devices that have different model numbers and also have extended warranties. So for the integrator, what that means is that they don't actually have to worry about the noise externally outside of the channel. They can offer a product that's exclusive to Pro, comes with the additional warranty, and also gives the Pro the one up on, hey, you want to buy the Pro model because that comes with the warranty with the Pro installation, right? At the same time, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Absolutely. Now, when it comes to installing the devices, we actually have a Nest Pro rewards program, and this is based off of installation of devices. Now, once a uh, integrator or the installer installs a device, they can then claim points towards the Nest Rewards program. Now, with the Nest Rewards program, you can accumulate points and use it towards Google Nest devices, vacations, tools. We have a company managing our rewards program. So it's not just, hey, you get uh, Google Nest thermostats or doorbells. If you do enough installations, you can take your family to you know, Jamaica or throughout the United States or even Europe uh, because we do offer those packages, right? And not only that, we have a way of staying connected to the customer. For the Nest Pro, for the integrator, for the installer, this is a great way of you being connected to the, your customer, right? By offering them Pro devices. Because a great example on the Nest thermostat, let's just say um, the, the HVAC system goes down, it'll actually display on the Nest thermostat the installer and their information on the device itself. So that allows the customer and the integrator to stay connected. And it's a way for them to ensure that the next time that they think about consumer electronics, that they're reaching out to their integrator. Now, one other thing that what we do to support the integrator uh, with the program is that there is a dedicated number for the integrator. It's 855-VIP-NEST, takes you to the front of the queue. Um, and you now can uh, get support on a device. They can also help with installation questions on, let's just say, your, th your thermostat. But we have this so that uh, pros are comfortable uh, offering Google Nest devices and also installing it. Um, and this is something that we've done specifically for the channel. And Adil, is there any sort of um, 
training involved uh, or do you have trainings during the year or any types of uh, certifications, things like that? Absolutely. On um, on g.co slash Nest Pro, you can go in, you can take training modules, you can track your installs, you can um, get the support that you need uh, on our portal. And for those of you that have a smartphone, you can click uh, on that QR code or you can visit uh, g.co slash Nest Pro and you can sign up to be a Nest Pro today and get all the benefits of offering Google Nest devices and also um, the pro differentiation uh, in the channel. Very good, we'll leave that up there for uh, another few seconds here. And then it, uh, it looked like we had a lot of great questions coming in, so I'm excited to get to the Q&A portion. Awesome, okay. well, I wanna thank you, Arlen, for putting this together. I'm gonna hand it back to you. Um, really appreciate you and, and Nick and Jay and everyone putting this together, so I really appreciate that. Very good, and thank you uh, again. You know, thanking uh, Google for being here as a as a sponsor and going through a deal, just going through all of this information, which I know is probably um, pretty eye opening to a lot of people out there, certainly. So let's uh, do a little a little Q and A here. Um, you know, first the question that we have here is. Uh, are you partnered with any in-home delivery services? Not to my understanding. Can you elaborate on delivery services? Is that I think would that be? I think third-party in third-party delivery services. Um, I want to say probably like a like a DoorDash yeah, so, kind of thing. <laughs> well, so I'll, I'll give you an example. You know, we do have a lot of great partnerships. Um, through the Google Assistant. So like OpenTable, Nike, Spotify. Mm -hmm. So we have uh, hundreds of thousands of partnerships and integrations. So um, can I call out a, specifically, a specific delivery service? Not off the top of my head, but we do have a lot of partnerships through the Google Assistant platform, which can uh, kind of create uh, that experience for the end user. All right. Very good. Uh, here's one going back to this. Uh, we'll talk. You had mentioned about the uh, the APIs before. Here's uh, someone had a question that, um, as a custom installer, says sometimes we need to write custom software to interact with Google Nest products. Sometimes the APIs to write such software are hard to find or incomplete. Um, you know, with the the Nest Yale is kind of tough to find a published API. Um, what is your understanding in terms of uh, how easy it is? for custom installers to work with the APIs for the, the Google Next, Nest products and where should they go to find any, any that they're looking for? Yeah, so the APIs that we have are usually through the manufacturer. So, you know, if you're doing integration with like Control Force, Savant, Crestron, those integrations have to go through those companies, right? We don't uh, allow for one-off uh, integrations to happen that way. So my recommendation would be to reach out to the manufacturer um, that you want to write the integration with and to seek out uh, a driver, uh, which they should have. Uh, like I said, the major automation companies already have a lot of drivers for us today. Sure, and then so for like smart lock companies, if it's <laughs> either the the Yale product or a third, another product, uh, it's something they could go reach out to them and try and find something. Yeah, so with Yale, I know we have integrations with Yale locks um, that you can uh, create, especially part of the routines. Um, that's another thing that I would encourage you to look into is we do have routines on the assistant. So essentially you can design a routine where you say something like, hey, Google, good morning. You know, your lights turn on, your shades go up, your thermostat adjusts, your coffee maker turns on, your favorite music station turns on. That can be done on creating a routine. Um, same thing with... When you say, hey, Google, good night, you know, your thermostat adjusts, your shades go down, your lock uh, locks itself. Um, that can be done through the Google system. And is there a resource live? Is it the like the, the training modules um, hub that you were talking about, that website where they can they find some of these commands and just like simply, you know, copy and paste when they're doing that kind of thing? Yeah, if they take the Google Assistant uh, module on, on the portal, um, it'll show you how to create those routines. 
Okay, sounds good. Uh, battery life, typical battery life per charge on a doorbell, an overall uh, life expectancy. So um, I can't speak on life expectancy because, you know, we design all of our products to have a really quality build. Um, when it comes to the battery life, on average, it's about 30 days before you have to charge it. Um, what I would recommend, though, if you're concerned about battery life with the Nest doorbell battery, I would recommend either doing a PoE integration or uh, solar power uh, through the solar panel that we offer through Wasserstein. Okay. How about on the MDU side of things? Um, and that's kind of a growing category for a lot of guys who are looking at um, integrating in uh, the light commercial space, resi commercial. Is there any kind of um, package available for um, multi-dwelling units or spec homes? So we don't have any specific packages um, for uh, integrators that we can do one off. Now we do have um, our rep firm, which is the Pure Tech Alliance. The Pure Tech Alliance, um, there's 12 rep firms across the United States. Reach out to your local rep um, that's a part of the Pure Tech Alliance. And if you do have an opportunity, um, we can definitely figure out a way to create um, a package uh, based off of availability. All right, that sounds uh, that sounds good as well. Um, someone was asking as well about the released uh, product availability um, anticipated for the the Wi-Fi six E products, so they can you know start taking better advantage of those specs. Um, can you say that one more time? What was uh, when okay, when are you releasing the releasing oh releasing products <laughs> with six E to take advantage of the six E spec? Okay, yeah, okay. So we're going to see um, devices have the uh, 6E compatibility uh, soon. Um, as we update uh, our products, you'll start to see that uh, come through as well. And that goes for every manufacturer. Okay. And then, um, you know, maybe we can kind of uh, check this last one. It's certainly going to be on the minds of a lot of questions. Um, what are you know? What are the margins like for these kinds of devices? Uh, you know, when customers can look at them online, is that part of what the benefit is of being the pro, where you have that exclusivity? Yeah. So when it comes to the the product line that we offer, um, it's a Nest Pro device. It it's not an omni-channel device. It's only available in the pro channel. So even if you do uh, have a customer who says, "Well, I found this at X," you can let them know that, hey, this is uh, only available on the Pro Channel. It comes with a extended warranty as well. So there's definitely a benefit to purchase the device from you rather than uh, another channel or another uh, route. All right, very good. Well, with that, uh, you know, we're certainly uh, eagerly anticipating uh, a lot of this stuff and seeing how everything kind of plays together and uh, I want to thank our guest, Adil Tufel from Google. Uh, we want to thank everyone for coming and attending today's webcast. Just to let you know, uh, this will be available online on CEPro.com within about 24 hours. And, you know, we want to hear from you. So we would love your feedback. Please complete the survey following the end of the webcast. Uh, and you can see what else is coming up by checking out the latest webcast schedule and registering at CEPro.com. So again, thanks everyone for attending today uh, from CEPro and thanks to Google for sponsoring and for Adil for joining me with this conversation today. Thanks for having me, uh, Arlen. Really appreciate everything that you did, Andrew did, Jay did to make this happen. Great, thanks Adil. We really appreciated having you.